Well, here we are in chapter 8. You see some of these pictures are telling us what's going to happen in the chapter ahead. So after all these downs and not too many ups, we come to a manger in a little town, Bethlehem. This is where we meet the new Adam, the child of Abraham, and the son of David. It's with the stinky shepherds and the singing angels where we see the real deliverer, the real judge, the real conqueror. No one understood it completely at that time, but when Mary pushed out that baby, God pushed into the world the long-expected prophet, priest, and king. God gave his people a new law, a new temple, and a new sacrifice. Best of all, he gave his people a new beginning, just as he promised. All the things of the Old Testament that were pictured that were to come are being realized in the birth of Jesus. Well, of course, some things were different than people expected. The stable with the animals and the scandal with unmarried Mary were surprises to most folks. The miracles were remarkable. The teaching was unlike anything anyone had ever heard. The bumbling band of hand-picked disciples, that was curious. Which miracles do you think are being pictured here? What miracle is this about? Remember when Jesus taught the water and the wine? Or this one? Feeding the 5,000 with the fish and the loaves? Or Jesus healing someone who is sick? Or Jesus walking on water? But the biggest surprise to everyone was that the chosen one of God was chosen by God to die. It just didn't seem right that the one destined to crush the serpent would be crushed by himself. So when Jesus, the Christ, the son of the living God, died on the cross that Friday afternoon, it seemed like a shocking evil beyond belief. And it was. It was the worst thing that ever happened in the world. Do you remember how we talked about the first thing that was the second worst thing ever was when Adam and Eve sinned and were kicked out of the garden? Well, this was the worst. Christ, the perfect Son of God, being put to death. And if you remember, maybe you could even go back and reread Genesis 3, verse 15, that first promise of the gospel, where it tells us that the... See, the woman will be struck on the heel, but he will crush the serpent's head. So even as Jesus was put to death on the cross, it is by that death that he killed the serpent. All right, but it was also the best thing that ever happened in the world, just as we would expect from God and just as God planned it. We break promises, but God keeps his. We run from God, so he comes to us. We suffer for sin, so the Savior suffers for us. Our story is a story of doing what we can't. Our story is a story of God doing what we can't in order to make up for us doing what we shouldn't. The Christ suffers for our sin that we might share in his sinlessness. Did you hear that? Jesus suffers for our sin so that we could share in his sinlessness and his perfect obedience. And so deliverers are born to die. Things fall apart so they can come together. God kicks his own people out of paradise and then does whatever it takes to bring them back. So look, there's the stone covering up the tomb. And then here is the stone that's been rolled away. And see, God made a promise. Remember we talked about that word covenant? That I'll be your God and you'll be my people. And he does everything that was needed to make us his people. Well, that's the end of chapter 8. See you soon for chapter 9.